Hey, welcome. Uh, today we're going to just do a short little interview with uh, some old Christians. <laughs> How do you put that in a nice way? No, some longtime Christians. Man, we have known Les and Aggie Gimmel for years. Back when I was in high school, uh, and you would have known Orlean's parents, obviously my parents. Yeah. And um, you were one of these, to me anyway, as a young teenager, one of these Christians of strong influence. Yeah. Uh, you were always at Tri-County Crusades, full gospel businessmen. I mean, again, you, you were one of these families that were committed to Christ in the community, just doing a, a marvelous job. But anyway, so you've been a part of Maranatha, though, because you were going to another church mm -hmm. for years. And, and um, I guess that church was going through some transitions and... The Lord just led you over to Maranatha. That was how many years ago? It's 32 as far as you can tell. <laughs> as far as you remember. Yeah. 32, 32 years. years. That's, a long, That's a long time to be like in one church. And you didn't just start attending. You got active and involved yes. all the time. Yes. I always refer to Les as just this wonderful teddy bear. Teddy bear. He has such a tender heart for the Lord yeah. and for people. Eggy, not so much. No. <laughs> Just a bear. <laughs> Just a bear. <laughs> no, anyway, so you guys have done an awful lot around here. Just whatever. Talk about some of the memories that you have. I know that, Eggy, you and your daughters are not afraid of work. No. Man, kitchen stuff was the thing that you and you guys did so much kitchen stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I, I, uh, cooked for you guys many Friday mornings for a long, long mm -hmm. time. Yes. yes. You know, and, uh, and it was fun, you know. And I'd give it up and then I'd want to go back. And, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get up at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock anymore to get in there and yeah, do that. Right. But, then, but then you're back. I'd still do it, yeah. But we did a lot of, uh, yeah, we were good in the kitchen. We loved it. Wouldn't it be amazing if you could count the number of meals you have cooked in church? Because you think about it, back in the day, I mean, every special event, yep. every special church activity, yep. man, you, you were in the kitchen. Yep. Oh, we liked food. Yep. When you go back to all the pictures before the year 2000, they were all surrounding kitchen pictures, food pictures, inside Picnic. the building, outside the building. Yep. So we, we ate a lot together. <laughs> we sure did. Yeah, we, we made did. a lot. We ate a lot. Yes, yeah. we did. Yeah, it was interesting because I remember helping um, organize that kitchen. Oh, yes, yes, to design yes. it. Yes. That's right. You were one of the key people yeah. when we designed that kitchen. Yeah. Again, for those of you who are newer, little things like this, you just you wouldn't know. You see her in church all the time. She was part of the one of the main team members that designed our kitchen. Yep. Wow. Yep. And everybody who comes in our kitchen loves it. You know, from other places, other churches, they come in and go, man, this thing is laid out so nice. This is so good. That's, that was you. Yeah. How cool is that? It, it was interesting because we worked for a catering company, me and my girls. You know, so we got in all the kitchens yeah. and got to know yes. Yes. how to, to use This doesn't the work here. Move it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Oh, true. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you got to have organization. I'm always amazed at you people who know how to cook a meal for more than six. <laughs> you know, these hundreds of people. Uh, and you're right, because you had worked in the catering business so long, yeah. that was no big deal for you. No. No, it wasn't. Yeah. And so we all who are overweight owe it to you. Thank you a lot. Yeah, yeah. No thanks a lot. You are good. Yes. Um, Les, so you know, you started attending here. Um, what are some of the things that you got involved in? Can you remember some of the things that you've done? Uh, men's men's ministry, uh, car show, yeah, car show. Any special Anything event like that, that went on? That went on. You signed up and you were a part of it, you know. And yeah, game dinners, game, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, for the last quite a few years now, he has actually sat on the board. He is one of our board members, and it's just great to have you there. Again, I think about over the years, just a crazy teenager, you know, getting saved, and then now I'm a pastor. And um, you're older than me, obviously, and I appreciate and lean into your wisdom, but you always are so supportive you acknowledge that god's called me to be the pastor us for sure nothing but incredible just respect and all that and that's that's really cherished it's wonderful um it's just wonderful to have that kind of relationship um one thing that's very interesting and people probably are not aware of 
when I share my call into the ministry, how I was at the college and God spoke to me those two times, and I was running from God like crazy, and I went to a tent meeting, and you know, God said, Mike, tonight's the night, ask anything you want. And I said, God, if you really want me to preach, tell him, the preacher. And a minute and a half after I said it, this guy looks at me, stops, and goes, young man, you've been called to preach, and you've been doubting it. You were at that tent meeting. You were sitting right in front of you. Isn't that incredible yeah. to think back all these years? Yes. So, kind of interesting, I have a treat for all of you. It was a couple of years ago, they were going through some stuff, and then they gave me this. This is the flyer, and I'll bet you guys, or Dennis Davenport, I'll bet you guys had a part of making this. Oh, yes. Well, we we helped put up the tent. We were involved with yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, all that Christian stuff, like I said, yep. all the time. So, yeah. so they presented me with this, because this is the tent meeting that was advertised, that where I finally surrendered and said, okay, Lord, I'm not sure if I'll make a good one or a bad one, but I'll do my best. And uh, here was the Gulling Sisters. Remember them? Yep. Remember them? Yeah. The Gulling Sisters yeah. and Dick Hendren. Dick Hendren just passed away about two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. passed away. But here it is, the revival. June 16th is when it started, the date. June 16th. Um, you know, we've come a long way since making <laughs> flyers like this. <laughs> Do you remember how these flyers were made? You went to the hard, to the to the hardware store or whatever. The, um, yeah, fax machine. <laughs> and you get a fax machine, or you you had lay it out, and you had these decal um, letters on a piece of paper. Yeah. You put one letter and you rubbed it on, oh, and you went to the next letter and you rubbed it on, onto a thing, and then Xerox them after you laid it out. And we didn't have. Uh, we had to go from church to church and and business and put up all them flyers because there was no. Yes. Email, Facebook, yeah, nothing like stuff. that. We, we just uh, we were determined. <laughs> Tell you how fast things have changed. I was just reflecting the other day. Um, you know our cell phones and our text messages. This was early, early days of phones and, and text messages. Orlean or somebody sent me a, a, a text and it had BTW. And I'm, I remember looking at that. I was at Walmart and I'm BTW. I, I had no clue. So it was a teenage. Walk up, teenager walking by. I say, excuse me, I really hate to bother you, but could you tell me what does that mean? And she looked at me. She didn't say it, but the way her eyes, <laughs> she communicated volumes when she was like, are you serious? She looks at me and she goes, by the way. <laughs> by oh, the way. Oh, well, that's what that means. BTW, <laughs> that's right. BTW by the way. <laughs> hey, you know, um, 32 years involved at Maranatha. If you think about over the, some of the highlights or the change in your life or being a part of a church for that long, what kind of things kind of stand out in your mind? How has your life been affected? Or what, what has it meant to your family, to you? Uh, well, it's gone from <clears throat> kind of black to white. Uh, just a, we got out of the legalism and uh, we realized that uh, you know, you can have tattoos and and do crazy things. Uh, and still be saved. And still be saved. The, uh, when Tina and Kendall got married, I remember I asked you if we could have a dance. And you said, well, you got to ask all the, you know, the board, board members. members. Yep. So I remember that. And they all said they yes. They all said yes. Yep. So I think that was the first dance we probably had in the building, yeah. 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 Except for the square dancers every Friday night. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember we had the uh, that Back to the 50s. Yes. Yes, you guys put that on, that party. Back to the 50s party. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then you guys sponsored and put on Valentine's parties. Yeah. In the old building, we had a lot of Valentine parties. You guys did that. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah that's, I mean, yeah. so much happens. It's like, you know, you guys were instrumental. Yep. And saying, hey, we'll, we want to do this. Let's, can we put it on and do it? You guys did it. Yep. I remember you guys weren't even old enough to go back to the 50s, but you were our chaperones. Yes. And we had the six inch rules. Yes. And yes. Yeah, we make sure you get too close. Yes. I know. Yep. Yep. Oh, it was yep. just so fun. Yep. Are there other things if you were just thinking about Maranatha celebrating 40 years? You know, I know there's a lot and you forget. It's like, oh, wow. Well, I, I think the biggest thing for me is. Uh, Pastor uh, Kevin was still 
at the old church and I was helping him whatever I could do with the, the men's ministry and uh, God got a hold of me there like never before as far as loving and forgiving people mm. and uh, and then naturally you enforce that um, just about every sermon in one way or another and uh, that was a big deal yeah I, I remember as a teenager just even from my cursor, cursory observation you, you were kind of a hard man but I would describe you to anybody now as being just the epitome of a loving teddy bear I, I, I know very few people with as much just sincere love for the Lord and a love for people it's incredible you're just you just love people your dad calls me a his teddy bear too. Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're right. Yeah. So quite a transition has happened oh, yeah. in your life, and Aggie's still just a bear. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The girls could go to him and get anything, but they yeah. didn't come to me. <laughs> they oh. still do. You know, one thing I I got to brag about. Well, maybe not brag, but I did put the heating and air conditioning in the old building. Yes, you did. And uh, you were. Uh, Gracious enough to ask me uh, if I wanted to submit a bid for this one, but this was just too big. A little too big. Yeah. But there, there again, um, kind of forgotten in the annals of time. Yeah, you did the heating and air conditioning in that whole building. I remember many times in the winter going up on the roof and during service. Yep, you know, fixing things. Fixing something, yeah. No yeah. heat or something. Well, you'd be happy to know. Well, you've been out there to install it and to fix it too. One of the old furnaces from the old building before we tore it down, you know, I got and I have it in my shop right now. So it's one of those downdraft ones. Remember, it's against the wall in the back of my, in the side of my shop. Yep. Yeah. Is that heater still there? Kind of wild. That's hey, you know, it's just really interesting to reflect. If we had the time to sit here and let the camera just keep rolling, I'm sure we'd think of other things. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I do remember going drag racing up at Brainerd and, and your wife was racing and she wanted she wanted to go 100 miles an hour yep. and and you did yep. <clears throat> and that was with jim star was quite a few trailers away snoring yes <laughs> thank you jim <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah you were up there that weekend i believe where she beat me yes yes, yes. you watched her just whip me on the drag strip because the uh the owner of, of the racetrack said, hey, Mike, you'd be kind of fun. Why don't you race your wife? So the announcer, Bill Bassanet at the time, he announced to everybody over the PA system, hey, everybody, you know, in, in 20 minutes, we're going to have the Rev, you know, racing his wife. And, you know, the, 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 the stands filled up again. People thought this was going to be kind of interesting. So I'm in the Brainerd brand new Firebird pace car, fast car by a new car standards, you know. So Orleans in her 55, we're there at the, the line, and I remember, you know, waiting as the tree came down, I cut a better light, you know, I got the jump on her going halfway down the track. She goes flying by me, and I'm thinking to myself, all the church people that are here are witnesses this. She just whipped me, you know? She just whipped me. But you it's on tape. Lean into, you built the car, well, of course it's going to go fast. Yeah, well, it? yeah, but, but another thing that people probably didn't notice, but I did, because she's ahead of me. So she gets to the end of the track. She rolls a window down and waves at me. <laughs> I'm behind her. She's waving at me like, hey, you slow poke. Like, right? you know what I mean? I love you. Yeah. 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 She said, come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Couldn't that you go a little faster, old man? That's right. <laughs> Couldn't yeah. you go a little faster? Yeah. That um, one of the things that we talked about before, but you can guess from here, is true friendships that are made. It's one of the things yeah. that we really value around here is finding the people to do life with. It's not just coming to a church and doing your church things. But no, it's, it's community living. I mean, you can come to church and just come to church if you want to, but if you want a community where you have people you lean into for you know fellowship but, or, or when you have a need or, or people that you can love, I mean, this idea, you don't get that as a guarantee by being born into this world. But there's a choice you can make if you want to be part of a Christian community. And it's been fun. We were just talking about that earlier, just the friendships that that you make and you can enjoy as you become part of a, of a fellowship like this. 
Yeah. They go outside of this building. You know, it's interesting because you're the pastor. The pastor is supposed to be up on a pedestal, you know, and I don't think we ever put you on a pedestal. You were just, you were our pastor, but you were our friend. Mm -hmm. And I know that the girls, the kids love that. They love to be able to, to harass you and talk to you. It wasn't uh, somebody that was so holy that you couldn't talk to. Untouchable, you know? yeah. You know, yeah. 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 You know, this idea of relationships and being real and all that kind of stuff. For people who are newer, I'd like to encourage them. As they're watching some of these interviews that are taking place and they see, wow, I wish I was a part of that. Well, you can be. Yeah. It's, your time is starting now. Yes. And you can develop these friendships, these relationships, because there's all kinds of opportunity around Maranatha to make this your family. Yeah. So it's good. Hey, it's been great having you as part of the family and as friends. Yep. Yes. All these years. It's been great. Great, right back. I tell you, you guys have helped me and uh, our family in so many ways. We love you. We love your family. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, they love you guys, and and we do. Um, Stories we could tell children, anybody who has kids, ups and the downs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Can I tell one story? You can tell it. We can always delete it. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. This was good. <laughs> I I was a. Uh, I roasted a pig for the, the, the church I went to, and uh, you were invited, <clears throat> and you came in there with uh, uh, the bike with the, the eight bars eight on it, yeah, yeah, yeah. and leather gloves on, tattoos, and, and I remember a lot of people from church saying, what's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, breaking stereotypes. Yeah. You did. Yeah. Sure did. You are. Breaking yeah. stereotypes. I'm a stereotype breaker. It's true. Yeah. That's true. But, you know, actually, uh, it's people like yourself and, and all the people who call Maranatha their home that allows us to be real people. Yes. And that breaks stereotypes. It really does. So it's cool. Hey, 40 years we've celebrated. This is incredible. 40 years. God is good. Amen. God has had his hand of blessing. Man, because... None of us are that good. God is good. He is. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And Les almost took down the ch church at one time. With his car, the burnout. Yeah, yeah the burnout. Uh, yeah, the burnout pad was right by the church. You know, we did it on the end of the building in the old old place. Had a patch of concrete there. And you got to back up onto the pad. Well, he forgot to take it out of reverse. Because there's a lot of commotion. You know, there's, you know, a lot of people watching you. The nerves are built. So he revs it up, dumps the clutch. And the car moves in reverse. It was like he caught it in time, thankfully. Almost hit the building. Would have rearranged the building and would have dented he meant, your car. He meant to do that. He was just adding excitement to the day. Yeah. You, you, know, you made it exciting, Liz. I was blaming it onto that Muncie shifter. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> sure, why not? Good story. Or the Stay Hearst quick. shifter. The Hearst, yeah. That's like, it was that problem. Oh, yeah. It came out, didn't click. I thought, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but that was an exciting moment. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. was. Very, very embarrassing. Yeah, I, I, unfortunately. Uh, that's just part of the fun, right? If we're going to embarrass ourselves, we might as well do it together. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> that's great. Hey, thanks for coming in and You're reminiscing. Welcome. Thank you. Guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys.